Today I want to show you the basics of the Unreal Engine 4 landscape system. So first of all create a new material. So type in for example grass, click onto it and then do a right click and create new material. Now type in a name for example landscape underscore mat. Oops, sorry. Open it and add every texture you like. So in here you have to add the specular map, the diffuse map, the normal map and all other stuff. I will just add the normal and the diffuse now. Oops, sorry. Then add another one, for example the ground. And now we can start. Now do a right click into the window, click on to landscape and add a landscape layer weight. Then type in a name, for example grass, here at parameter name. Copy this, paste it and type in for example dirt. Then connect the first one, so the grass texture sample with the grass layer. The second one, the dirt texture sample, with the layer from the dirt. And the dirt layer has to be connected with the base and the grass with the base color. Now copy those two and paste them. And then do the same with the normal map. So connect the grass normal map with the layer from the grass, the dirt normal map with the layer from the dirt, and the grass with the normal map. And you do that the same with the specular, the metallic, the emissive color and everything else. You do it always in the same way. Now that's a basic landscape material setup. Now we could also scale the textures up or down like with the what's it called the landscape layer chords. Just add them, connect them to the UVs, and then type in a mapping scale. So there you can scale the textures up or down. But we won't do that now. And just click onto this little arrow here. Now click onto the mountain, so the landscape tool, add your material to the landscape. And now you should see layers, so the tab layer should appear. There you can choose the layers that you've created with Word Machine or Terra Sculptor, so landscape programs, and there, you've, yeah, there you can add them so that the, the, that the terrain that you import is already painted. But we won't do that now. Then up here at Import File, you can also import the height map. It has to be a RAW 16 file, just, just in case if you want to import it. Down here you can choose the location, the rotation, the scale of course, and here you can also choose the quad scale, the section per component, or the number of components. But I will just leave it like that now. So I'll just click on to create. Now it compiles the shaders, and meanwhile it does this, we click on to the sculpt tool, this one here in the middle. Here you can choose the brush size, so how big the brush should be, for example here. Okay, now the video lags a little bit because of the combining shaders. And of course the brush fall off. That's the that's the second circle around the middle one. Then at the tool strands, you can choose how how strong the tool should be, how yeah, how big the hills or the mountain should be. For example the 0.3 is like that. And the one is for example like that. So here you can see a big difference. Okay, I would say just wait a little bit until the shading has compiled. Because it's a little bit annoying that it's so dark. So let's just wait a little bit. So I'm back now and as you can see here, here's the difference between the two values, the 0.1 and the 1. Okay, so as I said, here you can choose the strands, the brush fall off and the brush size. Then up here at the sculpt tool, you can choose which tool you can use. For example, there is a sculpt tool with that you can create hills. For example, like that. Then there's also a smooth tool where you can smooth it. Then of course a flatten tool. There you can flat everything. There I would recommend you to use a value of 1 so that you get a pretty good flat flat landscape here. Then a ramp tool. There I just have to press Ctrl and I just drag and drop it. And as you can see here now, when we click on to add ramp, we get a pretty nice ramp here. Here you can also, do, here you can also adjust some values like the ramp wide and the side fall off. But yeah, you just have to play around a little bit. But as you can see here, it creates pretty good ramps. Then of course the erosion tool. That will create an erosion effect. For example, down here you could choose if it, if it should if it just should lower the terrain or if it should raise the terrain. Or even both. And at noise scale you could choose how how tiny or how big the noise should be. For example, when we put that to one, then we get pretty tiny noise as you can see here. And we put it to let's say 200, then we just get a pretty big noise. 
Then there's also a hydraulic erosion tool, so that you can create hydraulic erosion, as, I sa as it said. So here it's the same, you can choose both, a positive, and of course the rain distance and everything else. So as I said, just play around with these settings. Then we come to the noise tool. There you just add a noise to your landscape, so if it goes up or down or even both. Here it's also the same, you can choose up, down, raise or lower. And the noise scale, you can also choose how tiny or how big the noise should be. For example, if a big noise and we put that to 3, we get a pretty tiny noise. Okay, now there's a retopologize tool. With that, you can adjust these textures here. As you can see here now, they're pretty stretched. And when you use the tool, they get normal. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend you to use it because this needs pretty much performance. So I don't recommend you to, to use that. Then of course the visibility tool, with that you can create case and everything else. It works the same as before. Okay, so now we come to the copy and paste tool. It's also called gizmo tool. With that tool you can move around different parts of your landscapes to another part of your whole landscape plate. So before you can use it, you have to click on to copy that to the gizmo so that those arrows here appear where you can move it around. After that, move it to, to the position where you like, for example here, and then scale it up or down. I'll scale it a little bit down and then I'll replace it to the hill here. After that, go to cop go to fit gizmo to selected regions and then click on to copy that to gizmo. Now move it to a different part of the landscape, for example here. And now with control and left click onto the grid, you can enter to, you can insert it here. As you can see here, it hasn't worked because we have a tool strength of 0.1. Here you have to type in some one of for example one or 0.3. So we'll do that again. Now control and left click. And as you can see here, it has copied the exactly the same part to another part of the landscape. Then down here at the Gizmo Import and Export tool, you can also export the height map from your landscape so that you can open it in World Machine or Terrascripto. For that you just have to go to Export, choose the path and then just click on to Save. Okay, so that were the, the tools from the landscape tool and now we'll explain you some other stuff. For example, the circle brush here. Here you can choose the, the shape of your brush, brush. For example, you can add a star brush or anything else with the alpha channel texture and so on. But that's just some, some, yeah, that's not so important, so just take a look at the documentation, then you will know how it works. But mostly I just use the circle brush here. Then it's smooth, you can also choose how it should look like. For example, a tip, then it looks like this here. Or linear, then it looks this here. Or even spherical. And it looks this year. So here you can just play around with this. Okay, now we come to the painting tool up here. Here you can also choose the brush size, of course, the brush fall off, different painting tools, for example, smooth, flat, and noise. With noise, you can add a noise to your texture so that, that there isn't just grass material, but also some dirt and something like that. And with smooth, you can get a pretty smooth overflow into another material. But I will show that later. So down here you should see your layers, so in my case grass and dirt. And now we have to just click onto this little plus here, and then wait, play and land a normal, and save it somewhere. And now we are ready to paint on. So we'll choose the dirt one, and then I will just paint on the landscape. And as you can see here, it's still compiling the shadows. So we have to wait a little bit. Meanwhile I will choose the smooth tool. And, uh, yeah, the shape here, and the shape here, okay. Okay, you can already see our dirt here. And now we will smooth it a little bit, after the compiling shader has finished. Okay, and now as you can see here, it smooths it a little bit, as you can see here. So that we get a better overflow into the nano material. So that's a pretty important tool here. Okay, so let's go to the manage section of the landscape editor. Here you can either add, delete, or move parts of your level somewhere else. So for example, when we add it, 
we change the bar size to 6, then we can add a new landscape part. So we just move a little bit up here, and as you can see here, here we can move more plates. With delete, we can delete them, of course. With move level, we can move it to another streaming level, so that's important for level streaming. And with change component size, you can change the component size of your landscape. So, yeah, I won't do that now. And as you can also see in the landscape tool, there's also a spline tool. With that, you can create rivers or also streets. But I won't show that. I won't show that now. I will show it in another in another tutorial. So, yeah, just take a look at another tutorial. Okay, so that's how the landscape tool works. And yeah, when there are any questions or any problems, just ask in the comments, and I will answer them. Okay, so thank you for watching, and until next time.